Greetings from the International Office of the Church of God to our members and friends around the world. Many of you are familiar with a novel written by Charles Dickens entitled A Christmas Carol. It is the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, a stingy, grumpy man who is transformed into a kinder, gentler man. Another novel written by Dickens is entitled A Tale of Two Cities. He refers to two cities, Paris and London, during the tumultuous environment of the French Revolution. This proclamation of revolution for oppressed citizens really turned out to be a spring of hope. However, for an ancient regime and outgoing political systems, this revolution was like a winter of despair, which led to death and destruction. This novel begins with these words. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. These words of a time of despair and suffering on the one hand and joy and hope on the other are descriptive of conditions around the world at this time. According to some sources, in 2020, there have been over 60.3 million cases of coronavirus, uh, killing over one and a half million persons. Many, especially among the weak and elderly, have a terrible fear uh, of dying from this dreadful disease. It has affected every area of our lives. Politics, health, education, family life, the economy, religious gatherings, violence in the streets, and so on. But thank God, in these times of great despair, for the message of great hope that we find in the Bible, promises and words of comfort, such as, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Uh, Luke 21, 28. Dickens' words, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, are also descriptive of the world in the times when Jesus began his ministry. During the approximate 400 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there had not been a prophet or a word heard from the Lord. The nation of Israel had come under the bondage and domination of the Roman Empire, but in the midst of such despair, many held on to the hope and promises of a coming Savior. Early in the ministry of Jesus, we read these words in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight uh, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue uh, were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now Jesus was reading from the 61st chapter of Isaiah, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, 
the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The proclaiming of liberty to the bound in the year of acceptance with the Lord reminds us of the proclaiming of the year of Jubilee by the sound of the trumpet in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 9 and 10. Adam Clark says, This was a general year of release from debts and obligations of bondsmen and bondwomen, of lands and possessions which had been sold from the families and tribes to which they belong. Our Savior, by applying this text to Himself, uh, Luke 4, verses 18-19, a text so manifestly relating to the institution above mentioned, plainly declares the typical uh, design of that institution. Is your heart broken? Are you in a state of mourning? Do you have a spirit of heaviness? Jesus heals the brokenhearted, comforts those who mourn, and carries your burdens upon His shoulders. He gives us joy for mourning, hope for despair, and beauty for ashes. The Spirit of the Lord anoints us today to tell the good news to others. When the baby Jesus was brought into the temple when he was uh, eight days old, uh, Anna, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all uh, them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Luke chapter 2, verse 38. As Anna did at his first coming, so we must do as we swiftly approach the second coming of Jesus. This is the good news that the angels brought to the shepherds on the night of our Savior's birth in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God and the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. May God bless you all. Amen.